Welcome to the Do Nothing Project. Everybody hear me okay? Sorry for uh, my tardiness. Uh, basically, two kids. <laughs> both go to bed at the same time. Both freak out at the same time. Two parents. No one to trade off with. Just it's a thing. The thing it is. The thing it is. The thing. The moment is. I know there are many parents in this world who could probably relate. Hello, everybody. Time to rest the mind, Valentina. Hey, Athena. Bring the kids. Can you imagine? My kids would. They're not exactly the meditative types, although they're, they're good meditation objects. Zen parenting is what uh, my old teacher Shin Zen used to call it. Just notice the unconditioned in your kids, the just happeningness of them, the, 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 the total spontaneity and freedom that just pours out of them, along with craziness and <laughs> reactivity. Well, it's not reactivity, it's just pure id, you know. Um, anyway, good to see everyone. Mitch, nice to see you. Lori, Linda, Greta, Chris, Phyllis, Fred, Will. Thank you for taking the time to join me. Um, if you've never been here before, this is the Do Nothing Project. It's a real live broadcast with real people inside the midst of their real lives. There's nothing prepared. There's nothing really interesting. It's just a, a moment to, uh, well, I, there is lots of things that are interesting. The, the community is interesting, the connections, the contact, the simplicity. I mean, I, I joke about nothing interesting happens. In fact, there's nothing more interesting that could happen in a way. Like when you get really still, then you get quiet. There's, I often think of it as like you move from a kind of um, two-dimensional way of thinking about life to a more three-dimensional way of thinking about life. The two-dimensional way of thinking about life is there's ups and there's downs, and you're trying to keep the ups and avoid the downs. But the more you sit, I find, the more there's this third dimension. It's not necessarily about sitting. Lots of people will, would recognize this perspective. There's lots of practices that could take you there and, uh, and just life spontaneously. But it's like there's sort of this depth dimension that even in your lows, and it's not so much about staying high, it's like whether you're high or low, there's a kind of richness or uh, um, sometimes I think of it as the beautiful ordinary. There's just this, the, the rich satisfaction of not needing to do anything, that it's not about the higher lows of whatever the changing conditions are. It's just right here, there's something fundamentally satisfying about it. And we kind of orient to that, and that's a game changer, you know, because then you're no longer needing to secure the ups or run away from the downs. I mean, it's the, um, it's kind of the uh, holy grail of, <laughs> of sp spiritual insight without making it into a big deal. And it's so available to every human being, most people don't even talk about it in those terms. They just live it. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I need to chill. I'm ready to chill. Thank you for coming. If you found me from Calm or 10% Happy or who knows where, you're certainly welcome here. Uh, all the people saying hello on the sides are mostly folks who come every week. And it's been a great support for me, actually, this community. I just wrote an essay for the CEC newsletter. Maybe Andrew can link to it on the CEC website. I put it on my website, too, all about, um, all about the challenges of staying regulated and just me kind of honestly talking about some of the stuff I've gone through the past few months and how I get back to it. And this is part of what's kept me sane. So let's do a very simple, minimal meditation. Uh, I'll just guide you my favorite practice, the kind of main thing I do myself. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, glad you liked it, Valentina, Brad. Beingness within the mundane. No problem, Gabriel. Big hello to you in San Francisco, Andrea. Okay. So we'll do, it's 8.10 my time Eastern, so we'll do uh, 
30, 25 minutes, so 8.35. And wherever you're tuning in from, from whatever time zone, you are welcome here. Of course, you're also welcome to do your own tried and true practice if you don't feel like following along with what I'm doing. <laughs> Robbed, ready to blast off into nothing. Bring it on the chill, Chip. Here we go. Okay, so start with a few deep breaths, slow breaths, deliberate breaths. Stretching up on the inhale. And then that nice long release on the exhale. A little article in the week. This week's New York Times with the vagal nerve, all the hypes and claims around it. But anyway, it's apparently related to the parasympathetic, so breathing as is breathing out. So as you breathe out, you can kind of loosen the neck and the throat, open up some space in there so you're not pinching any nerves. And kind of enjoy that out breath. Let it be genuinely physically settling. Maybe smoothing out the worry lines of the forehead, loosening the jaw, the shoulders and the hands, the belly. I say loosen the belly. It's amazing. There's a lot of carry a lot of tension there. We also carry just a lot of weird conditioning. Like I got to suck in my belly and I got to, or I got to bear down and brace against the world. So I find that the cue for me to loosen my front is really a cue to let everything be here. To let the body be what it is. Sounds be what they are situation you're in, just accepting that this is what's here. And right at the beginning, too, just appreciating this opportunity to take a break. Letting it be ordinary. Letting it be simple. It's not a thing. It's just sitting here. Being. Like there's nowhere else you need to be or want to be. And if it's helpful for you to, you know, just work with a home base to help get things settled, that's no problem. The breath is a nice one, obviously. The feeling of the breath at the nose or the belly. Really any body sensation. I find lower down, you pay attention like in your belly or where you're connecting to the seat or the chair or your feet on the ground. It can have that grounding effect. Tingling hands on the knees. But you can work with sound. You can work with the... Um, the Gans, the swirly Gansfeld, kind of black, white, vibratory lava lamp flow behind the eyes. That can actually be quite a fun thing to work with. 
And whatever you choose, it's like if it's breath that you're breathing and you know you're breathing. Hearing and you know you're hearing, so you're present for this home base. But in a non fixated way, not tight with the attention, loose, relaxed. I'll come back in a little bit. Good. As patient as things uh, settle in their own time, might be lots of thoughts or very few. Body might feel relaxed or neutral, or it might might be things going on, sensations, emotions. It's all good. Just accepting what's here. The more stuff that's going on, the more uh, the home base can be helpful as a focus for the mind, kind of zooming in on the sensation, noticing the soft underbelly of a sensation, meaning the subtle, subtlest parts of it or the quietest parts of the sound, the softest part of a sensation. That kind of focuses the mind a little bit and it's also, it can be pleasurable.
as we begin to orient to less and less. Kind of play around here if you like, but uh, seeing how still the body can be, if that's comfortable for you. And I, I mean that it may still be a gentle undulation from the breath in the body, but it's this thing of beginning to try to feel quiet or stillness with the body, feeling what that's like, noticing. nothing <laughs> kind of um, slowing down your body clock to be that and then of course there's still movement and life and thought and energy but there's a part of our experience that somehow kind of begins to open up uh, see if that's available for you something to play with
And then breasts just coming all on its own. Nothing you need to do. Sounds come all on their own. Everything is changing and moving through. Nothing you need to do or manage. Only taking that in. Nothing you need to get right. feel like to put down any last burdens here in the moment.
Okay. So I'd like to finish with a, some kind of a friendliness or gratitude practice. If you've got your go-to for that, you're welcome to. And I was, for mine, I was thinking about this quote by Alison Gopnik that I really like. She's a developmental psychologist. She said, uh, we don't care for people because we love them. We love them because we care for them. Meaning, the act of caring is what engenders or builds the love. That's why people who aren't even necessarily related to little kids, you know, they begin to care for them and the love is there. So it's really this practice of caring that we enact that's what builds and sustains love. This is an awesome kind of reversal of thinking about it. So I was thinking for the practice, I was thinking about my friend Mark, who I was just, I just totally very badly put on sunscreen on his face the other day and, and made it just, we we're both laughing our asses off. And that's how I'm caring for him, by basically pushing him into the bushes or, you know, whatever, putting on the sunscreen badly. Just so in your mind, how do you care? Think about different people and the way you care for them. And just kind of think about that. What's the way you care for people? Because that's what's building the love. And it might not, doesn't look like a Hallmark card. It looks like whatever it looks like. So just connecting to that, the different expressions of how you care for people, how you care for your friends, what that looks like. And you can repeat a phrase like, may you be well or something. We're kind of rehearsing caring as part of our practice here at the end. Maybe it's making something for someone, saying something, or maybe it's just being present. Of course, it's all the more affectionate stuff too, the hugging. You know, imagining something isn't inconsequential. It's a kind of doing. Yeah. Well, may you be well. Hey, good to see you, Byron. I was just thinking about you, buddy. Thanks, Ben, Angela, Angie, Brazil, Anna, Carrie, Ollie, Chris. Hey, Ruth. That was really nice for me, actually. I mean, it's always nice, but I was huh, kind of deep there. It's interesting. Uh, definitely going to do a do-nothing project about this at some point, but I did this trauma session yesterday. I've done tons of that work. I've done some training in it. I met with this person over um, Zoom, and it was like we... Uh, because just stuff's coming up for me with my little guy and challenges like remembering challenges, I guess, in a way of when I was little and some 
the hard things that happened. And, um, you know, I did this session and I'll get into it at some other later date more how it works because it's so interesting. But it's just like sitting after that, I can feel there's this whole layer that's been not there right now. So it's very easy to go deep, this whole kind of like ah, layer. And even tonight, like with my guy, he was super not wanting to go to bed. And normally I would be very frazzled by that, but I was just feeling very chunk. So it's just interesting how that work is so complementary to meditation practice. I'll unpack it more later, but um, grateful for all of you. And uh, I think I'm going to be on CC tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to do a CC tomorrow night. So if anyone's around, uh, the CC sits are a little different. They're ha they happen over Zoom. And uh, uh, you can, you know, you have the option to have your camera on or not. And they start at 730 Monday night. So I'm going to kind of talk about that newsletter I wrote, you know, how we regulate ourselves and uh, a little bit about that and lead a practice kind of related to that. It's in the, on the CC site. So uh you're welcome to come to that it's free or you can leave a donation um uh, cc is a not-for-profit the content explorers club fans saying helpful tips for staying calm during bedtime would be universally appreciated no doubt i'd like to learn those too uh, the cc practice is recorded and put on their website yeah 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 i've written about trauma therapy before in other contexts i can't remember where um, but I'm due for a proper write-up sometimes, so I will do that. All right, friends. Good to hang out with everyone. I'll see you next Monday. Have a good weekend. Stay sane. Thanks, Andrew, for moderating. And see everyone tomorrow, whoever wants to show up for that.